Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we're here and this is going to be week number 5 of the UPBA and we're up against Trexo and his Portland Timbers. Now, I'm going to have to be quick about this, I'm going to have to one take this because I'm hours away from leaving Warpax East. But look, you guys get it. This is a specially defensive Seismic Toad, a Scarfed Blacephalon. I'm actually bringing the same Mill Tank and Sand Slash combination as last week. I really think that Sand Slash has a huge, huge potential to just bop the team if it's under sand. Ideally, it gets Swords Dance up and it can do some things. Here him is Habanberry to stand up to the Nugganadel if it gets out of hand. I believe it might have Earth Power uh, just for the Metagross. I don't really recall, but it's not going to be super relevant. And it boots Galvantula, honestly, because it pressures the team a decent amount. And I kind of need to be able to pivot in and out in certain situations. So we're going to get right into it. And you guys know what's up. I did lead off with a Mill Tank. And you guys should know, ideally, what this Mill Tank is meant to do. If you don't, then please watch the last week's match. But uh, watch it after this one. Just, you guys will figure it out, right? Basically, this is a Tyranitar, and it's disguised as a mill tank. But first things first, we have to get a Brox. Um, it's going to help a ton with Sand Slash Calc, actually. Uh, and really, Sand Slash does a ton, ton here. If I can kind of maneuver a few things. But sets up Spikes turn one. I'm not the most worried about this Excel Gore. Um, I just want to be able to give my Sand Slash as many turns as it can get. So we're here. We're getting up rocks, and you guys, I, I hope by now know that I hate turn one rocks, but uh, it's kind of the position we're in when this plan is so structured, and when I, again, I really just want to give the most time to Sand Slash. Now, this is was a bit unusual for me. I tried to click uh, Thunder Wave this turn as he switches in out into something, which is fine, but... Uh, I kind of had had this feeling that he was going to sit in front of me a, for, for a little bit, so I felt like I wanted to put myself in a position to to, to 1v1 what's in front of me. So I, that's, I guess, my reasoning for, for the Thunder Wave. Maybe I catch him on, on some kind of a switch in, but I just kind of felt like he, he didn't really want to... Uh, he didn't really want to switch out immediately, and I was going to have to kind of deal with it before I set up the Sandstorm and give my Sand Slash um, the most turns possible. But I end up Thunder Waving this Hypmontop on the Switch, which is fine. I don't see that it's Intimidate, which is interesting. Uh, I don't, it wouldn't have mattered, I believe, because my only attacking move is Body Press. But, uh, it is going to do a ton of damage, which I don't mind because, because, uh, I want this melting to, 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 to go down, and if I can get some damage off on this hit on top, then it's going to make it easier for my Sand Slash to kind of clean up. However, 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 I do see the Bulldoze, which makes things really difficult for me, because all he has is, 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 is a spike, and I have to take a hit from hit on top. Now, it's probably never going to go for, for Triple Axle, because I, I am Thick Fat, and because it's it, it's a melting, so I feel reasonably safe in my ability to, to, to take a... Sand Slash hit if I did want to switch in, but now seeing Bulldoze, that literally messes my entire plan up, right? I, I can't just switch into a Bulldoze and give my Sand Slash the most earned possible. So, I just want to stay in here, get some damage off, and honestly, I think I'm fine seeing that this thing is under half now. Because I think at this point, Sand Slash can come in and clean up with, with an Earthquake, and I'll be fine, reasonably. But... Uh, just, I think I'm fine to, again, just weaken this thing further. You can see here, I, I check turns just to kind of be sure of certain things, but I don't really want to want to risk not not being able to KO with, with an Earthquake. I just stay in. And again, I cannot get Bulldozed. That kind of throws my entire plan out the window. So here, I'm just kind of hitting what's in front of me and trying to get as much damage off so sand slash can can clean up but i'm expecting to get ko'd here reasonably soon but he gets paired again and now we're at the point where after some sand damage i just uh ko here right so Miltank pick up another ko it's gonna contend for my ko leader at this point right but uh can't even walk punch uh and we did see that it wasn't intimidate it was uh technician which i think trexo mentioned was a mistake on his part but regardless it never really mattered however taking a technician mock punch would have been uh not ideal but at this point it's not really my biggest concern because uh mill tank is here in sand and it's not really where i want it to be especially now that i'm weakened and it can really kind of allow in anything 
it can allow in the Naga Dell. It can allow in. I guess that's the main thing that I'm worried about, right? The Naga Dell is always going to be my biggest concern here as it comes in here. And uh, this kind of confused me, right? Because I expected it to be KO'd, but at the same time, this Miltank, I don't know, maybe takes something. No, it probably doesn't. I, 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 I retract everything. However, I thought if he tries to nasty plot, which was honestly my, my biggest concern, right? Maybe he's going to think this is a free nasty plot opportunity. If he thinks this is, this is a free nasty plot opportunity, I can pretty freely thunder wave here, right? So I think I'm thinking this through because I am honestly fearing the possibility of him trying to collect thunder wave because I think he's kind of figured out my, my set, right? He's, he's figured out he, he's he's seen rocks body. Per I, I think he's seen my full set, right? So he should know that nasty plot here is free. However, he clicks sub, and now I'm honestly a little bit terrified, right? I'm pretty terrified. Um, so now I'm thinking, I probably have to switch. He probably never clicks Draco, because Draco doesn't make a ton of sense here, because I am so weak, and I have to try to figure something out, right? Because I can't give him free turns. And I think I'm running calcs, which is why I'm just not in inputting anything at all. But I'm my kind of main. What am I doing? My, my main kind of uh, answer to this thing is going to be the seismitoad. But I had to think some things through, right? So if this thing gets a nest plot up, I think I go down to um, to a Draco, right? But it's just kind of what I have to deal with here, right? Goes for Sludge Wave, which uh, is part of the reason why I switched this thing in. This thing is max special defense. And uh, I take that really, really well. I take that better than I expected, uh, to be honest. But my only goal with Seismitoad is, is, is to break the sub, right? Because once the sub is broken, I can, you know, give up my Sand Slash just to deal with this thing, right? And you can see I, I even checked the turns just to make sure that if I do get KO'd, I gotta get KO'd quickly. And I gotta make sure that all my turns are efficient. And, and, and you can see even here, I start to think this through. So, so actually, this is where I'm starting to think. He's never going to click Sludge Wave again. He's going to click Draco, right? So, if he clicks Draco, then uh, he goes down to minus one because of Beast Boost, right? He goes down to minus one with the drops plus Beast Boost, which is then going to allow uh, me to come back in and, and deal with this better. He does go for the Draco. My point is... Because I, I knew that he was going to go for, for, for the Draco, I thought about sacking my, my Miltank because um, that would allow me a clean switch into to, to Seismitoad and it would allow me to be better off in the in the overall look of this game. I, I even considered resting here because I knew that I would have to take a, a, a strong hit, but getting rid of the sub was so, so much uh, more important than getting cute with rest or anything like that. But this Seismitoad is always here to sit in front of this uh, Naganadel and potentially rest on Dracos. It can switch in on Sludge Waves. It can kind of do a lot here. And you can see here, I'm, I'm considering it again, whether I want to uh, go into Miltank directly. Because I think, it's a, I think it's a worthwhile stack here. Especially now that I know for a fact that he's trying to go for uh, the Draco. Now... I was, it was pointed out to me that I should have been afraid of him clicking a uh, Nasty Plot behind a sub, which is totally, totally fair, but I think behind this, if he does click Nasty Plot, then I kind of lose anyway, and my failsafe, my, like, super third degree failsafe is go is always going to be the Kieran Black, so hopefully it, it, it doesn't get there, but that's something that I'm willing to do here. I go into Miltank, then, and this thing comes in, which is super duper interesting to me, right? Because uh, this is one of the things that I can sandstorm again in front of. As he goes from the knockoff, so unfortunately I'm not, I'm not gonna get five turns of sandstorm, but I do get a fresh sandstorm up, which is huge. It's um really interesting because I finally, finally, finally get to use hand slash the way that it's intended. So now I can kind of give myself up. I kind of and I'm finally, I'm, I'm so low that he can't, like, keep me up. He can't just, like, click spikes forever and and keep me up, right? And I do, like, mildly threaten with, with Underwave as well. Goes for a U-turn, picks up KO. So that's fine, but everybody knows that I have to go into Sand Slash. So he has to think about what he wants to do. 
uh, what's his best hit slash answer essentially, right? Because that's probably what's, what's he, what he's going to throw out here. And honestly, his team really doesn't have a good sand slash answer, right? Uh, I do a ton with Earthquake to everything. Rock Slide KOs the Thunderous. And uh, what's the other thing? Zarude, I have I have Leech Life for, but Earthquake just, just does so much damage to, to the team with a little bit of coverage from Sand Slash, and the team honestly just gets bopped, right? So, again, he has to think of, of, of what his best answer to Sand Slash is when truthfully he doesn't have one, as, as long as I play things correctly, right? So he goes into Zarude, and honestly, I had a thought to myself, it, would it be too obvious if I just go for the Sand Slash to, that I have uh, the Leech Life here? I don't know maybe it is maybe it isn't but regardless i have to go i have to go into it and i have to close lead to life right i have to just attack what's, what's in front of me right i feel like i'm in a solid position here because i feel like the mons in the back deal with his team reasonably well and as long as i can as long as i can maintain pressure i feel like i'm in control here right even though I don't know. It's it's, it's like a, a five to five game, and truly, it's, it's anyone's game, especially when he has a Naga Nadel. Um, I do have a couple fail safes to, to the Naga Nadel, in particular, Scarf Blacephalon, and uh, Kiram, Habanberry Kiram. But I have this feeling of, of control, at least, or, or, or at the very least, um, this feeling of, of, of pressure that I have to maintain, and and hopefully within a couple turns, I can get to a, a feeling of pressure, right? So that's where I'm at right now, and Zerud uh, returns. So obviously, he probably was looked to see wh whether or not I, I had a bug move. If he didn't know already, I can leech life into the, in the into this Excel Gore. Now, uh, fun fact: this this Sand Slash is designed. It's it's actually Jolly Sand Slash, right? Which I really didn't like, but we did it. Whatever, it's fine. But it's designed to outspeed a scarfed Urshifu, which didn't come to this matchup, obviously, but that's what it's designed to do, um, outspeed scarfed Urshifu, right? And those numbers also work out to outspeed any Excel Gore, so I, I, I believe. So, we're here, actually, no, I actually think it doesn't outspeed any Excel Gore. I just kind of relied on him, like, having some nominal amount of speed creep, but I don't remember 100%, but, uh, Regardless, we, we, we outspeed, because again, this is a very, very fast hand slash, right? We outspeed a Scarfed Urshifu, and he may have, like, crept for, for, for a Scarfed Urshifu, but I, but Razor and I went very uh, aggressive on this uh, creeping here, right? So, we're here. We, we picked up one KO, one singular KO with uh, what's hand slash, and Metagross comes in. Now... Running these Metagross calcs is when I really, really wish that I was uh, Earthquake. Or sorry, was Adamant. But I really thought this through a ton because I think... I, I really felt in my heart of hearts that he was baiting me. He knew that it was the last turn of Sandstorm and he was baiting me into an Earthquake. And really what he, what he wanted to do was double back into Thunderous to make me waste this final turn of Sandstorm. Which uh, I didn't like, <laughs> but... I felt kind of stuck here. I was I'm hovering over Rock Slide a ton because I'm thinking through what does it I'm, I'm also hovering over Leech Life a ton because um really the this screamed to me that he was trying to pull a double switch here and waste my last turn. He and he could also be going going into Zarude. I think I clicked Leech Life because if he goes in if he goes into Thunderous, I can deal with it, right? I can take a, a hit from the incoming Thunderous. And I can hit it back with a Rock Slide and pick up a KO. If he goes in a Zarude and I and I click and I click Rock Slide, assuming that the Thunders would want to come in, then I'm in an awful position, right? I cannot KO the Zarude, and the Zarude can KO me back potentially. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, um, he stays in and just goes for rocks, which blew me away because I think he had a respect that I was adamant, even though I wasn't adamant, right? Um. And I could have KO'd there, right? Potentially. Unless this thing was super duper bulky, but I don't know. For whatever reason, I didn't get that read, right? But regardless, regardless, we're here. And um, 
this thing comes in on the earthquake that I expected, right? And we see that it's not boots. So I'm honestly thinking about what it can be, but oh, I, I think I'm also calcing um, Grass Knot as well. This thing doesn't have Grass Knot, but click to U-turn as I believe I click Rock Slide. And this is my worst nightmare coming to, to, to life, right? Being caught in, the, caught in the vortex between all of the all of the mons that resist hand slash, right? But, again, I still feel like I handled the team well. And Sand Slash, for whatever it's worth, applies pressure, right? It, it, it caused the... It caused the Thunder to have to come in, re reveal no boots. It it's applying pressure, right? For for whatever that's worth, it's 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 weakening the team, right? And it's uh, kind of forcing something, right? Zrood comes in. Now I go into Boots Galvantula, right? And I did run some of these calcs before the game, but uh, Galvantula kind of manages Zrood decently well. Now I didn't expect it to be quite this well because. Against his particular Zrude, I take two power whips. So I switched into this power whip, and I can do it once more, which is huge for me, right? That is huge. But the bigger point here is that um, he's, he's going to be expecting the, the, the bug move every day of the week, right? It doesn't make sense for me to really just click bug buzz and, and just, like, rinse and repeat what I've been doing with Sand Slash this entire time. I can just click Volt Switch. I can try to get some momentum. If he does stay in, then whatever. I can sack him on to, 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 to Zarud. I still feel like I'm applying pressure. Like, like I'm, I'm up a Mon, right? That's that's fine, but it doesn't really matter for, for my headspace here. The bigger thing is that um, I continue to, to, to apply pressure. And for me, that meant clicking Volt Switch in this situation. Maybe I should have clicked B Bug Buzz. It's fine. Does does withdraw, and uh, I can force this thing to take Rock Damage again and a really strong hit. Right. So now we're in a position where I can see this thing is not boots. It might be choice into something. Right. But because of that damage, it cannot come back in unless it clicks Defog right now. So I don't know. Maybe it like scarfs itself in it into a uh, into defog right i don't know regardless it allows me to apply more pressure with sand slash right and the bigger deal here right is that it's so weakened now that uh even a leech life will ko which is big for a not missing rock slide and b um protecting myself against any switch because if the metagross switches in then i should reasonably outspeed a metagross and uh and with two rounds of rocks plus a leech life and a and a uh, a follow up er earthquake, I should always pick up a KO, right? So I I'm feeling like this is the optimal way of applying pressure, but just let this thing go down, and I have to just deal with whatever wants to come in here. I think I'm not gonna deal with scary, obviously. Maybe ugh, no, I don't know. And now I'm not in a position to take anything here for it, which sucks because um, I really need to apply pressure to this thing. But I, I see just how weakened this thing is because, and I, I'm not even sure that I really hit this thing yet. I think that's all just from Sandstorm plus uh, it clicking sub and rocks as well, right? But because it's shipped down so much, I'm starting to to, to run calcs, and um, Blacephalon no longer has to like fire blast here, right? It can KO with with flamethrower, which is huge. Um, this is a modest scarfed Blacephalon, and honestly, modest scarfed Blacephalon calcs are pretty nuts because they muscle through some weak resists in a way that uh, was really interesting to me. But now I'm starting to I'm, I'm starting to to look at my options here. I'm um, I'm considering ju just playing it safe, going into the, going into the seismic toad and kind of, I guess, um, playing the longer game here. But especially when, when Zerud's still in, in the back, that's super dubious, right? But I decide to go out into this Blacephalon, where and I take a ton from rocks and spikes. However, I think I'm in a position where fight with, sorry, where flamethrower just kind of KOs the rest of the team, right? Because, again, this thing is so weak that uh, I don't really have to be concerned with hitting Fire Blast anymore. Flamethrower just KOs everything. 
I expect him to want to stay in here um, and and test whether he can take a hit. But uh, the things in the back are just weak to a strong fire move, which is all I have. Right. Um, in fact, in my head, I, I, I thought I was going to be switching in so many times with this Lacephalon and doing so much with it in, in, in the early to mid game that I have three fire moves just in case. O overheat? Modest overheat calcs are insane with Lacephalon, right? I felt like I, it, it was worth bringing just because it does so much damage, even if it's a, even if it's a one-time thing and I have to switch out accordingly right afterwards, right? A flamethrower is my safest option, which is obviously for the super duper end game, which I guess we're in now, right? And uh, Fire Blast was meant to be like the more mid ground, like again, just just the holy sheesh. This does so so much damage, and it two hit two hits resists. Honestly, it two hits uh, not gonna deal like from full pretty much, or, or very very close to it. So I had to pack Fire Blast just for that factor but i feel very very strong that i'm in a position to um, i feel very very good that i'm in a position to um just click flamethrower and win this and close this game out with flamethrower because obviously that's the cleanest way to win and uh without any priority i can really just kind of go through everything left i mean i say that between those two mods i i know that the metagross is gonna come out right you guys know where i'm going with this i'm very tired i'm about to leave for pack and uh we're fine right you guys know. You guys know. Anyway, uh, we're here, and I'm a, I'm a plus two. This is super effective. Flamethrower to, to a Metagross from a gosh dang modest Blissephalon. We're waiting for it to come out, but it'll 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 get here. It'll get here. Don't worry. Uh, and now, yeah, it's it, again. I, I keep thinking about the Sand Slash Calyx. At this point, it's so weakened where uh, again, even a Jolly Sand Slash would have KO'd with uh, with Earthquake here. Goes goes for a Bullet Punch. However, I put, I made this thing pretty dang defensive because of the bullet punch possibility and because of something some other priority that I don't really remember. Oh yeah, no, sorry. I was also thinking about how to deal with mock punches from him on top, but that was like a team wide building thing. That was not the on specifically. Obviously, you guys know. You guys know. I'm very tired. You guys know. Anyway. We pick up a win, and we finally were, were able to orchestrate a Blacephalon sweep, right? Of, of all the things, right? From from week one, I was trying to win with Blacephalon, and we finally did it five weeks in, but uh, this was a really, really strong game. I really need to stop rambling because I need to uh, leave very soon. I need to pack. I need to do other things, but regardless, this was a very, very fun week. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon. I gotta go. Thank you guys. Once again. <laughs>